Hey, this is Mike Johnston, back again with another episode of the Indie Media Show. Alrighty, so, here we go. And, um, we're on the phone with Don Mickelson, who is co-producer director of the film Red Tail. Hi, how you doing? I'm good, how are you, Mike? Alrighty, well, I saw the film, and I met you out at the Flyway Film Festival in Wisconsin, and, and I really liked it because I, I think the film... Um, looks at the whole globalization thing kind of from an angle that nobody really thinks about. Um, so when when you guys set out to make the movie, I mean, what all did you have in mind that, that you wanted to do with it? Well, it's interesting because the film actually started out as two separate films. Melissa was making one about her father, Melissa Cook, my uh, co-director, and then I was making one about kind of the disintegration of Northwest Airlines through the stories of workers, and we joined forces um, about six months into my production process and discovered that we could, you know, combine these stories and that really the compelling story, the, the story that really you know, moved me and moved her, obviously, <laughs> was the story of her family and her father, uh, Roy Cook, who is a former Northwest Airline mechanic who lost his job to outsourcing and then decides to go to China to find the worker who replaced him. And, yeah, it's, um, it's just an incredible story of the Cook family because, really, they are such a inspiring family, and Roy is such an amazing man. So, you know, it's like the moment that came into view, I was like, all right, we're following the cooks, <laughs> and we kind of went from there. So, um, you know, what happened in China and what happened to Northwest Airlines um, during the course of production, some of it we saw coming, North, the fall of Northwest we saw coming, um, but uh, what we found in China was completely a surprise. Yeah, well, that's I was I was pretty surprised too. I mean, well, on the one hand, like you were saying, just for a, a family to kind of embark on a project like the film as as a group effort was was pretty cool, and um, and then you know everything they were doing in China and stuff like that, um, just going like okay, hey, you're the guy that has my job now, you know, and that kind of thing. Well, it definitely evolved. I mean, we, we all had a sense that the, the bad guy in this story, if there is a bad guy, a, a singular bad guy, uh, was probably not the worker in China. You know, I think that that dynamic of um, animosity that's created between workers in the U.S. and workers in other countries is created... I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be a conspiracy theorist, but somewhat intentionally, to to distract us from what's really going on, which is you know a disintegration of the larger system, whether it be you know the the way that global capitalism is playing out today, or whether it be you know in this case the airline industry specifically. Um, so we get so wrapped up in let's blame each other, and that happened on a smaller scale at Northwest. You had all of the work groups um, pit against each other at various times, which created a situation where the airline could take out one work group at a time, and by work group I mean, you know, the mechanics were taken out first, you know, and then the other groups, the mechan or the uh, you know, flight attendants and the pilots and, you know, uh, bag channelers, they're all left fighting with one less group of allies. And and I think that this is all, you know, terribly deliberate. And so, it, you know, the red tail really kind of turns that around and says, okay, we are not the bad guys here. You know, the, the people who want work, who want to raise a family, who want to just live a, a decent life aren't the bad guys. Um, and maybe there is no bad guy. Maybe it's a bad system. So anyway, don't even get me started on this. I could talk about this for weeks. <laughs> well, I mean, one thing I, I realized out of it, too, is, you know, that I think, you know, this was actually, you know, from the get-go was ex exactly where it was supposed to go, but people didn't understand that. Yeah. Now, it's, it's very frustrating the, you know, there's, there's so many misconceptions in 
in the system and, and how it works. You know, and it's very frustrating to see um, workers like Roy being told by, you know, other other workers in this country that you're just being greedy. You're being greedy for wanting, you know, essentially what you've worked so hard for. Um, and if you just took this pay cut, well, this pay cut that now makes you now make less than, you know, <laughs> less than uh, minimum wage, or, or, you know, you're making minimum wage now. You're greedy if you don't want to go there. And, you know, these guys have worked very hard. They've dedicated their lives to these companies. And it's, you know, the companies have always treated them like, you know, we're a family. Remember, we're a family. And so all of a sudden, your per- your parent or whoever this person is that runs the family has decided, yeah, we've decided that we don't need you in the family anymore. <laughs> and so there's a lot of emotional stuff that's going on with this, too. I mean, that's kind of minor, but it does play into how, I think, how workers end up being treated and how you know, they get taken advantage of, and it's it's very frustrating. It's wonderful to see, you know, the Cook family and other families like them turning around and saying, you know, we're not going to be victims of this system anymore. We, you know, we're going to take this into our own hands and, you know, stop being a pawn. So, and, you know, the whole the whole line about, um, about it becoming a service industry and we'll all live these great white-collar lives and, you know, and we'll then be the managers of the world, there aren't that many more manager jobs. And that was kind of part of that larger, I guess, lie <laughs> as well. You know, it's it's not like we need any more managers. So our jobs leave, but there is no replacement job. And if there is a replacement job, it's working at Denny's. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the service industry that people didn't think about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, I hope that watching the tra- trailer will make you want to uh, see the film. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. Right. Well, I, I imagine that's pretty important. How much did you guys <laughs> spend on making the film? Well, it's all on, on how you define spend. You know, I would say that we raised probably somewhere around thirty thirty thousand dollars from individual donors, usually people who gave less than a hundred bucks a piece. And, wow. uh, you know, most of that was travel costs. Um, our crew and everybody involved uh, donated their time to make this film with the hope that, you know, it would get out there in the world. So, yeah, it's been a real exciting process for us in that in that regard. But, you know, if everybody got paid, <laughs> this film would be a completely, completely different budget. You know, we're also going to be doing a, a tour of the film starting this spring and going throughout 2010. And uh, that will be, you know, through colleges and universities uh, across the country and hopefully around the world. We're starting to book those now. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to actually see it on a big screen in your hometown, you know, visit the website and contact us and we can coordinate a screening. All right, cool. Well, hey, thank you very much for being on the show today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. This has been fun. All righty, great. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, holding my shoe and I'm feeling on.